Okay, hi everyone. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on factoring large order polynomials. we got a couple new keywords that we're going to work with today. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started on, um, let's see, something a little new. Okay, so here's my problem. My problem is 9x cubed minus 63x squared plus 74x plus 80. Okay, so this type of problem that we're looking at today, we're still trying to factor it. But on your homework before, you guys had problems that were all a 1 in the front. This was a nice x cubed, no number in the front. So today we're going to work on problems with a coefficient that's not 1. Okay, Problems with like, the coefficient is not 1. So to get to this point here, I want to go back to another point. And let me give you this problem here. We'll say it's uh, 3x squared minus 23x plus 40. Okay, let's come back here to this problem here and ask yourselves, let's try factoring this problem. And the way I factor problems like this, I see the possibilities are 3 times 1, 1 times 40, 2 times 20, uh, 4 times 10, and 5 times 8. These are my possibilities. Which of these combinations add up to 23? So we start multiplying 3 by all these different possibilities. 3 times 4, 1 times 10. That's 12 plus 10 is not 23. 3 times 5. 3 times 5. And 1 times 8. That gives us 15 plus 8 is 23. Oh, we found the set. So the way I factor it, I write it as 3x and x. Multiply 3 times what? 3 times the 5. That's why I write the 5 in the back and 8 in the front. And we say we, they're both going to be negative because we need them to combine that to be a negative 23. So if you don't know how to factor um, x squares, you can, you can stay afterwards. I'll teach you guys a lesson if you guys need it, how to factor x squares. Or you can email me, I'll send you a video how I teach factoring x squared. So here's my issue. The way we got a 3x squared in the front is because we have to have a 3 someplace in one of my factors. That's just what it is. Unless if I can divide 3 out of all these terms, we need a 3 inside our factor. And you can see here, I do have a 3 inside this factor. Now, let me go ahead and go one more step. What was the actual zero for this though? The zeros, the problems, sorry, the values of x that make this go to zero are x minus five is equal to zero and three x minus eight equals to zero. This is all from algebra two, plus five plus five. You could probably have done this in your head. X is five, that is one of my roots. And over here, moving the eight over, three x is equal to eight, x equals to eight over three, okay? So this one, not too bad, but this one here, a lot harder to ever have guessed. I would have put positive because of this negative sign. Okay. If you want me to prove it, I can plug that into here, and that should uh, multiply out to become zero. Okay, so we're going to take this right now, and I want to have you guys look at the possible roots for this. If I wanted to use synthetic division to divide this, are 3x squared minus 23x plus 40. What are our possible r values? Well, we said 1, 2, 4, 5. Oh, I'm running out of space here. Looking at the last term, this would have been r is 1, 2, 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 4 times 10, and 5 times 8. And this is what we did before to find our possible r values. These are not the roots, these are just the possibles. But the problem is, if you see here, we do have a 5, bam, but we don't have that 8 over 3 as a possibility. And here's what you have to do, and this is our rule. If I'm trying to come up with a possible roots and I have a front coefficient that isn't 1, we have to now take those factors and write down, take a look, it's going to look like this, 1 over 3. Why? Because there could have been a 3 in the front. It could be 2 over 3, 4 over 3, 5 over 3, 8 over 3, 10 over 3, 20 over 3, and 40 over 3. And this seems like a, a hell of a ton of options, and that's true. But the idea is not all these are answers, but we want to see the possibilities. And if you take, take a look here, here is my possibility 8 over 3. 
Now, why am I bringing this up? Is because the number we have right here, 9x cubed minus 63x squared plus 74x plus 80, is a hard problem. I say it's a hard problem because we have a lot of possibilities. So let's try writing out those possibilities. The r could be, starting from here, 1 and 80 make 80. 2 and 40 make 80. 3, nope, 4 and 20 make 80. 5, yep, 5 goes into it. 5 and... Uh, 5 goes into 15, so 15, right? 5 and 15, I think. It's not 15. No, 5 and 16, 6, sorry, 16. 16, okay? 6, nope, 7, 8, 8, and 10. We have a lot of options here to make 80. And you say, but we're going to go through all this time trying to guess which one's going to work. You're right. And the reason why it's going to take us a lot of time is because we don't have a nice way of factoring this. Okay, so let's keep on trying. Now, to go along with this, that's what 80 was, right? But here's the next step. We have to break apart 9. So 9 is 3 times 3 and 9 times 1, right? Just like how we broke up the 80, we have to write down all the possibilities for the A value. Now, here is our problem. Not only is 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, not only are these all my possibility for roots, our possibility for roots are also 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 4 over 3, 5 over 3, 8 over 3, 10 over 3, 16 over 3, 20 over 3, 40 over 3, and 80 over 3. Not only are these are possibilities, it could have been 1 over 9. See, I picked the 3 and then I picked the 9. 1 over 9, 2 over 9, 4 over 9. 5 over 9, 8 over 9, 10 over 9, 16 over 9, 20 over 9, 40 over 9, and 80 over 9. Why do you have to write so many possibilities? It's because as we throw numbers into the mix, our factors become more numerous. There's more possibilities. So if we have roots, these are my possibilities. So where do we go from here? We start synthetic division. 9, negative 63, 74, and 80. Make sure you have your signs correct. Now, on your homework, I'm going to tell you this. For over half your homework assignments, you will be given, use this root. Here's a hint. Here's one of the roots. Here's one of your answers. And on this problem, the answer is going to be 5. I'm going to give you it's 5. On the test, for your test, I will give you some of them. For the most part, I will give you well, at least one of the roots to get you started. Right. So don't freak out about that. I will give you, just like in the homework, I gave you some of the roots. So let's go ahead and work it. If that's my root, my factor is x minus 5. Make sure you see that, that my factor is x minus 5. Working from here. Here we go. 9... 45, combine those. If you want, you can have a calculator on the side. 63, uh, negative 63 plus 45 is um, 8, 5, 18. Yep, 18. P negative 18, multiply by 5. 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 8 is 40. That's going to be negative 90. Combine these together, that's going to be um, 26, 16. And then that's going to be negative 16 multiplying by 5. We have negative 80. And as we hope for, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now we have 9x squared minus 18x minus 16. Now we could factor this by hand. Um, and I'm going to do this by hand now. Let's think of possibilities. We have 3, 3, 9, and 1. 1, 16, 2, 8, and 4, 4. Can you guys find any combination by multiplying across, speed dating, that subtract out to become 18? Now, please be advised, if you don't show me your work for factoring, I know you're cheating. Okay, If you don't show me your work for factoring, I know you're cheating. Because how are you going to do this in your head? Oh, I just know. You're a liar. Simple as that, you're a liar. Mr. Code, don't you trust us? Nope. 
So if you don't show me how you came up with the factors, if you want to draw Xbox and you guys were taught Xbox, fine, do that. I need to see it drawn out. Cheaters, cheaters win. They just do it immorally. Okay, so I'm going to start multiplying. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times uh, 16 is 48. Way too big. That's a fail. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 8 is uh, 24. Is 6 minus 24? 18? Oh my gosh, it was. So we know our values are going to be 3, 3, and 2, 8. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 8 is 24. And if we do, do subtract them, we get 20, as we get 18. So the way we write the factors, I said 3 and 3 are going to be in the front. 3x, 3x. I always draw a connective, like little frog face here. See, that's like a frog. Who do you multiply the 3 by? We said it's going to be by um, 2 and then by 8. And here's the hard part. What signs do we need? One has to be positive, one has to be negative. We have more negatives. So we want to make negative 24 and a positive 6. Good job. 3, 3, 2, 8. You got it. So what are the factors of this original problem, which seem kind of crazy, right? It's going to be x minus 5, 3x minus 8, and 3x plus 2. So today's skill is to say, hey, you know what? Factoring might not always be nice whole numbers. I might have to use one of these fractions. And if you take a look here, what is the root here? If I went ahead and solved it, that's going to be a 5. That would make it go to 0. Over here, this would be add 8 divided by 3. That's 8 over 3. Minus 2 divided by 3. 2 over 3. Let's go ahead and hunt these down. Were these possibilities on my chart? 8 over 3? 8 over 3 was a possibility. Yes, it was. And 2 over 3 was also a possibility. But these were, one of these were negative, I think, right? The 2 over 3 is negative. So all these possibilities had a positive and negative version. I forgot to mention that before. So our roots were found in all our possibilities. Do you have to write them all? Depending on the question. If some questions ask you to write down all the possible roots, hey, these, these are all the possibilities. Did that end up using all of them? You know what? I stopped at five. That's it. That's the only one I used. But we want to know all our possibles, just so we know that we're not, we're not guessing randomly. Okay? So this is one of the new ways of us factoring. Knowing that, hey, if there's a coefficient in the front, I need to break that up and use that as a possibility. Okay, let's go ahead and Try another problem. This problem is 9, 9x cubed plus 36x squared minus 43x plus 10. Now for this problem here, I'm going to tell you the root. And the root here is going to be 2 over 3. 2 over 3. Now today, we're going to look at the problem of synthetic division if I end up with a funny root. So here's my problem. Let's go ahead and set this up. 9, 36, negative 43, and 10. And here's my root. It's going to be 2 over 3. The factor is 3x minus 2. Okay. 3x minus 2, and this is my factor. So you might see something kind of weird going on. I'm going to try. Will there, will there be a problem where there is no a x? Um, most of our problems that we will see will not have an a value in front. Most values we want to see. But we will have problems where there will be an a value and then we have to account for that. So right now what I'm doing here is I'm giving you guys a look-see in a couple ways that we might have, some, a couple techniques that we need to solve these problems. Like one is, what if I told you the root again is a fraction? And then here's the factor. How did I end up with this factor? Well, we'll see in a little bit that this is really x minus 2 thirds. So isn't x minus 2 thirds, if I plug it in here, that would give me the 0. But we'll, we'll come back to this guy here in a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and do the math. Now take a look. First one is bring it down. Now here's what I do in case I'm confused. I need to multiply 9 up by what? 
by two thirds. So let me write two thirds here just because I need a little help. That's right, Sarah. So if I multiply two and divide by three, nine times two is 18, 18 divided by three is six. But please save yourself some time, watch. What's nine divided by three? That's three and three times two is six. Save yourself time. Add this, that's gonna be 42. Try it again, we're gonna multiply this by two over three. 42 divided by three is one, four, 14. 14 times two is 28. If you want, you can multiply 42 times two. 42 times two is 84. 84 divided by three is 28. Okay, both ways work. Combine these down. Uh, that becomes a borrow the one. 13 uh, minus eight is five. That becomes a three, negative 15. So 28 plus 15 is 30, yep, okay. Multiply this by two over three. Take a look, I'm always writing the fraction next to it because I don't get confused. 15 divided by three is five. Five times two is 10, negative 10. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. To rewrite this now, we have nine x squared plus 42 x minus 15. All right, we just take those front numbers out. And now since we're here, we can factor it by hand. Oh my gosh, factor by hand, nine and one, three and three. These are my possibilities in the front. I don't know if it's gonna be, is this gonna be three and three or it's gonna be nine and one, I don't know. So we're writing down the possibilities so we can then quickly check them. One, 15, three, and five. Which of these subtract out to become 42? So actually, I see the trick already. What is nine times five? Nine times five is 45. One times three is three. 45 minus three is 42. So let's see how we're going to write this. We're going to write this as nine. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, nine X one X. And we said we multiply nine times five. That's going to be three. And we want more positive. So we want this to be positive and negative. Okay. So here's the problem with synthetic division. If I write three X plus two, right? That's our value and nine X minus three and X plus five. There is a problem with this. What is nine times, what's three times nine? That's 27, is this 27? No. What is two times three times five? That's six times five is 30, is this 30? No. So here is the problem with synthetic division. And there is a flaw with synthetic division that we always have to be careful of. If we have an A value and if you look here, remember how I wrote these two options? Let me ask you, 3x minus 2 versus x minus 2 thirds. Wouldn't 2 thirds be the same answer for both? If I write 2 thirds minus 2 thirds, that would be a zero. 3 times 2 thirds minus 2. This would also equal zero. 3's cancel out, 2 minus 2 is zero. So which one is my factor? Synthetic division thinks you are using this guy here. Thinks you are using this. So here is the problem. We're not using 3x plus minus 2. We are using x minus 2 thirds. And this is what you have to do. Do you see three here as a fraction? It means there's a hidden three someplace in either of these two terms. Do you see a factorable three in any of those two terms? Take a look at nine X minus three. Can I factor a three from that problem? Look at X plus five. Can I factor out a three from that problem? Well, if you guys notice, I can factor out a three from nine and I can factor a three from three. And we're left with, please watch, the, this is the important part now. 
We're going to multiply the 3 by the front and the back. And we end up with 3x minus 2 and 3x minus 1 and x plus 5. Now if you look here, that was my original 3x minus 2. Synthetic division has a problem. The problem is if you have an a value and you end up using a fraction okay, as my key point, the factor is this guy, not this guy here. It's not this guy. So how do you get back to my 3x minus 2? You have to look for a 3 somewhere along the line that you can take back out. And that is the problem when you have an A value with synthetic division. You might have to look for, look for it. Okay. So, um, let's see. Okay, let's do, let's do one more problem. Let me check something here. Let me give you one more problem. 9x cubed plus 18x squared minus 7x minus 20. Okay. So I'm going to tell you that negative uh, 5 over 3 is a root. That means this is a 0. This will help me find out the factor. We set it up. 9x cubed plus, no, darn it, synthetic. 9, 18, negative 7, negative 20. All right, this is how we're going to start it. My root is negative 5 over 3. What is the factor? Please write this. x plus 5 over 3 because that's my 0. To rewrite this, the actual factor is going to be 3x plus 5. Okay, Because if I write negative 5 over 3, that's going to be my 0. But synthetic division doesn't know this. You have to know this. Let's go ahead and do synthetic division. Bring down the 9. I'm multiplying by negative 5 over 3. Folks, this might look super hard to you, but I want to make sure you guys understand it is actually not hard. Take the 9. What's 9 divided by 3? 9 divided by, but divided by 3 is 3. That 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Next step. 15 minus, no, 18 minus 15 is 3. Multiply this by negative 5 over 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. We multiply this by negative 5 over 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Negative 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Oh, positive 20. And we are 0. What do I do with this? This is going to be 9x squared plus 3x minus 12. I want you guys to notice something right now. We need a 3. Didn't we say we need a 3? We need that 3. Can you steal a 3 from these numbers? So here is actually the, the main trick. Once you're done with synthetic division, take out any common values that you know I could use to fix this first term. So we know this is going to be 3, 3x squared, plus x, minus 4, because I took out the 3. And where does the 3 go? 3 goes over here, so we end up with actually 3x plus 5, 3x squared plus x minus 4. How to get 3x plus 5? I said 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 5 over 3 is 
15 divided by 3 is 5. Now let's go ahead and factor this guy. Now we have to factor an easier number. The reason, um, the reason why I got 3x to the 5th is, look at this fraction here, right? I don't want a fraction in my factors. I don't want a fraction. So what number do I have to multiply that fraction by? I need to multiply by 3. And I know there's a hidden 3 here. I know there's a hidden 3 here. So I take out the 3 from 9. 3 and 12. That's why we're here. And we say 3 times this factor gives me 3x and 5. Osvaldo, are you okay with that? Still a little confused? Or are you okay? Okay. So that's what happens. When I'm given a, on the side, if I say r is equal to 1 over 3, you're going to write x minus 1 over 3. But you really want to write times 3, 3x minus 1. You really want to write this. This is what your real factor is. So you're going to look for a 3 to bring it back. Okay, find that 3. All right, last step is factoring 3 and 4. 3 times 1, 4 and 1, and 2 and 2. Any of these options subtract out to become 1. Hopefully you guys can see 3 times 1 is 3, and 1 times 4 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we have our factors. We have 3x and x. And we said 3 times the 1 and 4 times 1. We need more positives than negatives. How to do it so quickly? Again, let me go ahead and do it a little slower so you guys can see how I did it. I said 3 and 1 are my options and 4 and 1 are the back. So this is front and back numbers. Means 3 and 1. Darn it. 3x and x are my front numbers. And 4 and 1 are my back. But which 4 and 1? And do I have the order right? Is it 1 and 4 or 4 and 1? So I draw my little frog face. And say, who do you multiply 3 by? We multiply 3 by 1 to become 3. And 4 by 1 to become 4. 4 minus 3 is 1, what we wanted. So 3 times 1, that's why I drew the frog face. If that, I put 1 there, I need to put 4 in the other slot. And we say, hey, who's going to be positive, who's going to be negative? Because to become a negative 4, we need a positive and negative. We need a plus 1 and minus, plus 4 and minus 1 because we need to have more positives. The next part of this today is multiplicity. Multiplicity. If I give you this, x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 1. What are the zeros of the graph? The zeros are negative 2, negative 3, and negative 1. That this is a, this is what numbers that will make it go to zero. Negative two, negative three, and negative one. Those are what will make the the polynomial go to zero. But why didn't you write negative two twice? And here is the fancy word multiplicity. Multiplicity refer, refers to how many times do you know a number is the answer? How many times will it repeat as the answer? So we see negative two has a multiplicity. of 2. Negative 3 has a multiplicity of 1. Negative 1 has a multiplicity of 1. How many times was negative 2 your answer? It was 2 times. How many times was negative 3 your answer? 1 time. How many times was negative 1 your answer? one time. So on your homework, they're going to give you a hint to say, hey, this problem has a multiplicity of two twice. They'll tell you the answer is going to happen twice. So let me give you this example. x to the fourth minus 13 w cubed minus 33 w squared plus 837 w minus 1944. This number is huge, okay? But they told us that x is equal to 9 with a multiplicity 
of 2. So we have a root, we have a 0 at 9, and it happens twice. So here we go. Let's use synthetic division, and we'll take a look here. They told me it happens twice, so I'm going to do it twice. Take a look. Negative uh, 33, uh, 837, and negative 1944. So we said the number 9 is going to be my answer. Okay, 9 is going to be my answer. Okay, here we go. 1 times 9, and then, so one first one's free. Our factor is going to be x minus 9. Okay, times 1. 1 times 9 is 9. 13 minus uh, 9 is going to be negative 4. 4 times 9 is 36, negative, negative 36 and negative 33 is going to be 69, negative 69, times this by 9 is 621, this is going to be a negative, so 834, or 837 minus 629 is 216, 216 times 9 is 1944. Oh my goodness, I did not even imagine that 9 was a possibility. Now, here's the thing. They told us it happens twice, a multiplicity of 2. So that word is of. Multiplicity of 2. So it happens twice. So what we do is we go back and we jump into the dungeon again, into arena, and we do it one more time. 1, 9, 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 times 9 is 45. Uh, 69 minus 45 is 24. Negative. 24 times 9 is 216. Negative. Oh my goodness, it worked twice. That's what multiplicity means. It means how many times do you have that answer? How many times do you have that answer? Now let's go ahead and, f f uh, not factor, let's go ahead and rewrite this now. This is x squared plus 5x minus 24. What two numbers multiply to become 24 that subtract out to become 5? 1, 24, 2, 12, 3, 8. You guys don't have to write it down. If you know the numbers that when you multiply to become 24, subtract out to become 8, or subtract out to become 5, you might know it's 3 and 8. We know our factors are going to be x, x, 3, and 8. Positives have to win, so there's going to be plus 8 and minus 3. You can double check that. That's negative 3 and positive 8 combined to become 5x. So what are all the factors here? The factors are x minus 9, x minus 9 because it happens twice, right? And then x minus 3, and x plus 8. So we know that the multiplicity is for 9 is 2. Now, the homework's going to give you guys a table now to see if you guys understand what multiplicity is. So they're going to give you a table of zeros and multiplicity, M-U-L-T. That's going to how they're going to bring multiplicity here. And they're going to tell you, hey, my answer is 5, 2 times, 4, negative 4, 1 time, and 3, uh, 2 times. All they want you to do is write down the factors. What are the factors? Well, don't we have the answer 5 happening twice? x minus 5, x minus 5. Because if I plug in 5, that's a 0. How many times do we have negative 4? x plus 4. If I plug in negative 4, that would be a 0, wouldn't it? So we have that only happening once. And then, sorry, I'm running out of space here. And then how many times do we have the answer 3? We're having it twice, x minus 3, x minus 3. So you can do these problems in like 30 seconds because they're just telling you how many times they want you to write the answer. Let me add this point. If you see a 0 like this, if you get a 0 and a mult, and it looks like this, okay? What if well, then what a 0 was 0? It happened once. What if you end up with a 0? 
twice. Okay, what if you end up with a zero three times? I'm going to show you guys what the answers look like. This would be x, x squared, x cubed. Why is that? If a multiplicity means how many times you have the answer, this only happens exactly once. If multiplicity is twice, this is really x times x. Those are your free x's. What if it happens three times? One, two, three. That's the number of times we have our answer zero. Okay, to go backwards, let's go ahead and fill out a chart. If I tell you my factor, if f of x is equal to x squared, x minus 5 cubed, and x minus 6, 10, okay? This is terrible. I'm not going to multiply this out, but this is, would be a huge x value. But what are the zeros, and what are your multiplicities? For my first zero, that's zero. How many times has this happened? Twice. For my next zero, what's the zero for that factor? Positive 5. And how many times does this happen? Three times. For my last zero, 6. How many times does that happen? 10. So on the chart, that's all you're filling out to realize that, hey, if it's in the factor form, I can tell you what the zero is really quickly. If there's an exponent, I can tell me how many times that number repeats as an answer. Okay. The last thing that we're doing today is writing that polynomial. We're going to write that polynomial. If I told you the roots, which is another way of saying zeros, are um, 4 sorry, uh, yeah, 4 uh, is um, x equals to 4 with a multiplicity of 2 and x equals to 0 with a multiplicity of 1. I want you guys to first write the factors. The factors for the first one would be x minus 4, x minus 4. I wrote it twice because the multiplicity told me you're going to write it two times. How about x is 0? That's a freebie. Whenever you have x is 0, that's always a freebie, but the multiplicity of 1. I want you guys to multiply these out together. This will become x squared minus 8x plus 16. Multiply by x. You guys can multiply that out the long way if you want. x cubed minus 8x squared plus 16x. What if I give you guys a different type of problem? When I say the coefficient is the same negative 1. How does this problem change? Here are your roots. The roots, the zeros, are 5 and 2 and 3 with a multiplicity. of 2. How'd you write this? Now, the cool thing about this, just FYI, is that the answer for today's work is only this. You, you can stop here. So we're just going to set this up as factors for the polynomial. So the polynomial could be x minus 5, because that's my first zero, x minus 2, that's my second zero, now, careful, the last one, 3, we have two of them because the multiplicity happens twice. Now, the last part of this coefficient, you just have to write in the front. And that's it. So if you see the word coefficient, you're just going to write that in the front for us to make it easy. Unless if our factors have that coefficient, we can stick that in the front.